from the Pathway Studios in Johnston proper. You are live from the path. And you're listening to live from the path. We're coming from the Pathway Studios here in Johnston proper. <laughs> hey, you know what's funny? Last week, this uh, better be funny. Uh, oh well, okay. It's not, it's not like a chuckle funny. Uh, <laughs> Eighteen hundred people listened to the po- podcast like last Sunday. Whoa! And then like three thousand on Monday. What? And then I published the show on Tuesday, and the next day the numbers were back in the teens per day. Oh no. Wait, what? I How think, is that possible? I think it was like, like, uh, like the Chinese or, or the, uh, the Chinese or, tw- automatically. The Chinese. They got in to listen to the podcast. I was about ready to do an impersonation of a Chinese Please guy listening to the life in the bath. No, nope, and I thought don't. that's a good way to get yourself into bad, hot water. <laughs> that's a bad choice. So okay, well, not so do that. So you're saying on Sunday we had 1,800 views. Yes. Monday we had three thousand views. So the, the world loved it, and the show hadn't been published yet. Correct. They were picking up the previous week's show. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying like in there was there was Ooh. no show that was even being watched. Well, for some reason, actually, it, was, it wasn't all on one show. It was impressions. Like someone who was like uh, thousands, uh, at least hundreds of people were listening to the entire back catalog. It seems real suspicious. Yeah. Anyway, I think that huh. might be the Chinese. I'm going to take a screenshot of it, and uh, for the people who want to advertise, it's going to cost you seventy eight dollars per episode. Yep. Based upon these numbers. Big money will finally be coming our way. Yep, yep. Okay, here's what we got going on the show uh, this evening. Mike uh, has a Twitter question related to communion. Yeah, you want to you get the question so you can thunk on it yeah, while yeah, we yeah. go through yeah. that stuff? Thunk Spit it. it. All right, here we go. The question is, well, it's not really questions. It's, it's a guy that made a statement. He said, do not deny anyone communion. Period. Ever. Period. Communion is not a reward. It is not a privilege. has enough and in a place remember jesus fed judas okay okay so the consideration is is do you does that make sense yeah. everyone has the communion do you, yeah right. do you ever hold communion back from people okay and have your you, answer have, is no have you done it dan no 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 i do for small for children for small right. children yeah but we'll, we'll talk about it yeah uh because that because i think there's a that is different than yeah. i think what he's getting at right um yeah i wasn't qualifying that yeah okay all right so yeah okay we'll talk about that uh also uh, sometimes old ladies too it comes out yeah, agree. yeah right yeah. yeah i stand there and i go not you not you yeah. not you yeah the blue everyone or the else, hair i don't like that purse the everyone the else crackers. Yeah. not you sorry i interrupted <laughs> I had to get that out. Okay. No, no, I understand. We got to put up fences. Uh, there was a study that came out says uh, most Christians think AI isn't good for the church. I've been using the heck out of this, to be honest with you. But I'll <laughs> Same, tell you, actually. I'll tell you how. Uh, because I, I think uh, there are boundaries, of course, on how you should think about it. But um, there have been places where this has come in super handy in one of my key weaknesses as of. Thing. Think about an AI Christmas series. Like you're going to have it write it for you. Like or I'm going to I'm going to create a Christmas card and tell AI to create it, and then I'll have a, a, a like actual scripture that would. Come. Oh yeah. I don't know. It just sounded fun. Okay. Yeah. No. I think, that yeah. was a brainstorming moment. Tonight I really. I, eating I really appreciate that there was no batters up option on that idea, Dan. You just threw it out there and you let I, it run. I think it'd be great. I think of a you know your your uh, you know, Thomas. Can- know nice little christmas image and then like okay yeah let's talk about jesus i don't yeah. know in my head it's yeah hey man yeah. Dan, you're gonna you... usurp every christmas card that's made been made in the last 100 years I mean, <laughs> you know if we had a serene setting and some scripture over the top of this it would fly off the shelves i also i also have no idea who thomas kincaid is agreed i was trying to think of it i was norman rockwell's what i was trying to say and okay. thomas kincaid came out like he isn't he the guy that does like the glowy art or something um, yeah once like again the, dan i don't the, know the, I was light, like, is the it, windows are light and glowy yeah is know. this one of those things i would have needed to know if i were a christian in like 1982 i don't know if it's anything christian i, I think it's, i'm okay. just not a cultured guy i don't know art or music you're, you're really down a metamucil kind of path right here. <laughs> I don't think anybody knows what you're talking about. You gotta take that with a fiber shot, man. 
<laughs> Sweet Moses. Okay. Uh, <laughs> also, there is uh, the, the husbands submit to your wives. Thank you. Ooh. What? There was some. It's just of... gonna say that and then go ooh. Yeah, yeah. Is it an article? Is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This lady says uh, we've we've read something from this lady before, it's, uh, but it's not the lady from uh, beliefnet.com. dot com. Too bad. Aww. She's got uh, the pulse of America. Yeah, no. I love beliefnet dot com. <laughs> she says uh, right out of the gate, I can hear some of you saying already, full colon. Now hold on just a minute. The Bible says that a wife is supposed to submit to her husband and not the other way around. Is this some kind of woke radical feminist thing I'm about to read? No, it's not. I'll give you that scripture instructs wives to submit to their husbands. Semicolon. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. That was, should have been a period. Good night. Paul's letter to the Ephesians says, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Okay, we, we know that. Case closed. Well, not so fast. A lot of messages on the subject of marriage that quote Paul's text in Ephesians make the mistake of starting with verse 22 primarily because of oh, many stop Bibles. stop it. <laughs> Nobody's done. Actually, I'm not I'm not running into this either, except for people wh- whose view on this is not changed by continued reading of Scripture. Yeah. Right? Like, they like, wanted to hear what their grandpa told them. Right. Or what their fiery Southern Baptist minister fired out to them when they were like eight. Yeah. And then they've ch- they will not let Scripture change them at all. I, this is what I'm saying. If you're, doing, if you're doing daily Bible reading, and you're making your way even once every couple years to the Scriptures, and you're reading in places like Ephesians, and the thing that hits you isn't... Jesus sacrificed, like, loved his wife like like Christ loved the church. Like, if that's not the part that sticks with you, yeah. you're not really open to hearing anything. Yeah. And right. so uh, I, I get, like, how – what that looks like to serve, how people think about what it looks like to serve and submit and love one another. Like, I, I get that those are ongoing conversations because, like, there's a notion of deference on both sides of that mm-hmm. that I think is actually a, 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 a super healthy conversation. But, like – the stuff where you're just using it as a total like misogynistic deal for a dude, like you're not open to Jesus changing your life. You wouldn't even be arguing about this, right? In this in this particular way, like a lot of people talking about this is that like, uh, does it? How different are men and women? Is it okay to still think the dude's primary responsibility is to vend the house? And is that okay? Like these are things we're struggling with culturally, uh, primarily because we're having the conversations in a you know progressive Western culture, but like. Not the hey, uh, I, I get to hit her right. Like no one's doing this. <laughs> right, <laughs> submit to me. <laughs> right, or or like like uh, or having I mean, eggs. Yes, right, exactly. <laughs> I make the decisions in this household. I don't have to take your feelings into consideration. We yeah. will be switching internet providers. <laughs> <laughs> I've done zero research. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Susie. Who pays the bills? Me. That's what yeah. I thought. And I also went to the store and bought all the cereal. <laughs> Put because on your you high heels to, to sweep that floor. Just because yeah. you and the doctor say no more sugar, I say Captain Crunch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what I'm saying. These are not serious people, is what I'm saying. They're right. not serious people. You're a cartoon. They're not seriously trying to follow Jesus. Like, Jesus busts down the stuff. Like, and as a matter of fact, following Jesus. Five and go, shoot, man, how am I to understand this? Yeah. Not, let me start my relationship with Ephesians 5 and then see how things shake out from there. Yeah, because the yeah. guy that understands yeah. the gospel gets to that point and goes, oh, no. <laughs> right, your yeah. Christian yeah. dating site shouldn't right. say, I'm really looking for a wife that's going to submit to me. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Where a guy that has has been changed by the gospel finds out that other people should be submitting to him and goes... Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. This is a great idea. <laughs> I'm the spiritual head of this? Oh, gosh. Oh, no. That's terrifying. I well, can sacrifice like like Christ sacrificed for the church. I can do that. But having people like look at me for like how to go, right. I don't know if this is a plan. Give me no authority, please. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say, Dan? Well, I was saying, and then you threw in a little First Peter, and, and like the whole challenge of the husband is to know his wife is yes, to study right. his wife and 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 know what makes her click and know how to love her and that that's the opposite of just submit to me woman yes and, right you know i mean it's, it's yeah 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 right right so like i do are there interesting and worthy discussions in here about especially culturally men and women and where yeah. they're different in the role yes like i think those are healthy conversations mm-hmm. but like the thing that she this woman is about to get into it's a cartoon I agree. I think it's a cartoon. They're not serious people. Yeah. Now, this does actually, back to the first Peter, I was thinking about this a couple of weeks ago. I was out and about during, uh, during the workday, and I needed to get home because I got a meeting I had to get on, and I thought, I'm going to do something special for my wife, something that's going to like just, I don't know, delight her day. My husband was thinking of me. Here's something special, and intentionally not for everyone else. So maybe I'll stop somewhere and get her something to eat, but only her. 
Like children oh. don't get anything. <laughs> like you got, got to set them apart. <laughs> so I sat, I, I pulled over and I sat and I thought about this and I, about, about 15 minutes. I thought, I have no idea what to get this woman. And I'm running through all the possibilities, every yeah, yeah. restaurant, every she gas station option. And I'm like, I, I don't know. What does she even like? And I, thought, I am the world's worst what does, husband. What does she eat? I have no clue. And so I don't do anything. I, I don't barley. I don't get anything. <laughs> I uh, I thought of one thing, and I texted to her. Say this out loud. I'm the world's worst husband. I was going to go do this. I need you to know I thought about it. I was going to do this for you, and I literally could not think of anything. She gets busy, doesn't respond to the text. I but I talked to her later that night, and I say, hey, I need you to help me because it feels like I, I really yeah. I'm dropping the ball. Like we've been married for. I don't remember. A lot of years. <laughs> Solid win number two. How long have I even known you? <laughs> it's getting close to 20. You know. I was say, aren't you at 18 or 19 this year? I think it's 18. It'll be 19 next year. So uh, so anyway, here's where I feel vindicated. She goes, oh, I really wouldn't have wanted any any type of food. Like, there's not really a restaurant where you could have stopped and got me something special, nothing from the gas station. Like, literally, True. I could ask her. And I'm, I mean, I'm an open book. You could pick out 10 things. I'm very easy. I buy the mm-hmm. same things all the time yeah. from any given restaurant. You could ease, like she could figure this out. No problem. Right. And so like, I'm dead easy to surprise and show affection to in this area. It's not because I'm a terrible husband, at least in this regard. She just is, this is not the right way to do it. Right. She, and so what felt, what would have felt super special to me, she shows up with some sort of anything really. <laughs> house but i got it for you i'd be like well yeah, i am a couple tick- of ring dings <laughs> i'm tickled pink <laughs> yeah a twin bangs or something you're like ah, this is from left field thank you for keep them kids field. out i found a couple tic tacs on the floor and thought you might want them <laughs> and i would say thank you for thinking oh, of me thanks That's delicious <laughs> but like uh Fresh. i thought well shoot i gotta start over though because i reached for a thing that would have meant something to me and literally there's no option that would have meant anything yeah. to her it would have been like oh i mean thanks but not hit and so uh anyway I felt real bad about that. I felt like I, I should have known better. And maybe I should have known that. But like in the back of my mind, I felt like random, I don't know, birthdays or like putting stocking type of things. Oh, like I think I bought her a Kit Kat. No, these are difficult, friends. I'm going to just tell you, like as a as a married man myself, like the the cha- the taste change behind your back. <laughs> that is the truth. What is solid like Kit Kats for three months? You're like, no, every time I even half mention, hey. Kit Kat would be great. I'm like, yes. And then month three, day one, you show up unannounced and without asking. You're like, hey, I stopped at the gas station and went home, picked you up a soda to Kit Kat. And all of a sudden, the look of disappointment. <laughs> like, uh, they didn't have, whatchamacallits? I'm like, I never heard you say that. They probably did. <laughs> well, you could have texted me and asked. Ah. It's at the bottom rung of the candy because nobody just, eats them. But I just know you so much, I nailed it with this Kit Kat. And you're like, you can put it in the fridge. Maybe the kids will want it. Ah. <laughs> like they, here come more arrows right to your soul. Right. Uh, <laughs> you didn't know I switched to Ferrero Rocher's recently? <laughs> yeah. After the cat. Yeah. Just, ah. I don't know. Dan, do you feel like, like you got your wife? Do you understand? You know her. You know what to get? Uh, you know, it, uh, I used to. I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> to yeah, yeah. Point. <laughs> Things, she doesn't like Kit Kats anymore. It, you know, yeah, there's seasons, seasons, seasons kind of change. And <laughs> I used to be able, I thought about this the other day, I used to be able to go out and buy clothes. And like, I knew what she, right. what she oh, liked and, and what she would wear. And, and she'd be like in love with what I'd get her. If I did wow. that now in the last 10 years, yeah. she'd be like, uh, uh, no. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> right. No. <laughs> And I thought, uh, yeah. So I don't, I don't even know how to figure that out anymore. I just kind of, as a lazy dude, kind of approach. She's like, I guess she, she's a big girl. She can get what she wants. I, I get your that, own Kit Kats. <laughs> I know that my marriage is essentially in, in its infancy versus the, you know, the three of you fellas. Like we just hit three years back in September. But like, I feel like I've got a good understanding for the most part of like what she likes and what she wants. But I think it also take it with a grain of salt is because like I've set the bar so low that I think genuinely almost anything is just monumental. Like she will when we're walking into a store together, if I reach to hold her hand versus when she reaches to hold my hand, it makes her whole day. It's like the day is so much better because I just went, you know, I want to hold your hand, not just that you want to hold mine. Or if I, I'll ask her about a food and she'll say, no, I don't need that. But then I'll grab it and bring it 
And she'll be like, you knew what I really wanted. And I'm like, yes. And why did you lie to me I the knew. first time? <laughs> why did I, you tell me lies? I, I would have just bought it anyway. I knew when you, like, you, di- you didn't want to have the guilt of having to say yes yeah. to the French. Oh, I, I think you got to know your if, exact scenario. Yes, right. I would have, if I say no, but I, you really meant yes. And she would go. No, no, I, I meant no. I, I no said no. no. Why would I, I this, say? That's true. This did almost backfire on me a week ago. <laughs> like I was on my way back from youth group, and I was like, "Hey, I, I want to stop somewhere some, for some food. Do you want a pumpkin or a, a chocolate frosty?" Yeah. And she goes, "Oh, I'm not neither. I'm fine." And like I pull up to the Wendy's, and I'm like, "She she wants both, really, because like she doesn't want to <laughs> she doesn't want to choose between the two." And so I'm like pulling up. I'm like, I'm going to get both. And I go, chocolate or, or pumpkin, babe? Just tell me. And she goes, no, like literally my stomach hurts and I don't want a Frosty. Okay. And I'm like, oh, good thing you said that because I was about to get you two of them yeah. and show up to the house real quick. And you would have been like, no, no I don't want that at all. <laughs> right. And then I just would have eaten two Frosties and it really would have been self-serving. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I think what this means, boys, is like these are these are constant conversations. Yeah. You can't rest on your laurels. No, they're, agreed. Yeah, no. they're drinky waters. Stay, stay up on it. And but I, I think I, I do believe, uh, ladies, and you can hit me up on the complaint line five one five five one seven zero zero eight five. Call or text. I'm just this about yourselves. Is this surprising to hear this? Because like, uh, so we had a, a recent opportunity where all my children were gone on the same day. This never happens. I've tried to pay people to kidnap these children. <laughs> And at most, they'll take two at a time. <laughs> and so the kids are gone, all of them. And so we say, hey, man, the day, a day to ourselves. And so I say, hey, uh, let's start the day going doing something that you she, – she needed a new pair of uh, tennis shoes or something. And I said, hey, let's start off with that. And uh, so we go to the outlet malls. And we're at the outlet mall for three hours. Three hours. Wow. Okay. I, I went to every store in there. Everyone. She was in two stores total. <laughs> Over the, and my wife is not like a shopper, as far as I understand. Like I've met the, well, she's not really like a like a shop. She didn't buy. She bought no, almost nothing. She found a pair of shoes and she tried on eight pairs of pants and didn't buy any of them. There's no way. By the third pair of pants, I'd have bought it just for having soaked up the time. Yeah, but like dude, right. we gotta get something. Yeah, sorry, I'm gonna take these. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I'm I'm going into stores I do not belong in whatsoever. I'm like, what is the what is the Forever Twenty One? <laughs> Stay out of there. Look at that. The large uh, there was items in the men's sections of the Fair, uh, Forever Twenty One, but the large men's coat looked like it would have fit an eight year old man. <laughs> uh, I was confused. I don't understand how this store functions. But anyway. Um, she was there forever and did not buy anything. And so I thought, well, maybe she must be aware that she's difficult to please, right? That like, <laughs> I, like I couldn't possibly. <laughs> You're on fire tonight, man. <laughs> <laughs> please, someone get that quote for us. This, uh, five one five. Yeah, five one seven. Ladies, was right she time. must be aware that she's hard to please. Are you aware right? you are difficult to please? Do you have self awareness that you were impossible? I'm just, to- I'm just saying, we're left to your complete own devices, and you could make any decision you want to. If it takes you three hours, what are the odds Dan's going to find a shirt that you're going to be like, whiz bang, you nailed it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. It just seems maybe it's just five. a high bar, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Anyway. She, she has to be aware. She, don't, she, don't you she, have to be aware? Don't maybe, you have to maybe, know how hard you are to please? Maybe you don't are not aware that she enjoys the journey more than the object. Oh, that's, yeah. And no. you bailed to go to the apparently... Nice. <laughs> and hang out with some very petite dudes. I check back. I check back in every like six minutes. I'd go to the store, check it out. Text. How you doing, I'd babe? Still on. Come back in. You still tell us. You know, you could have made husband type comments uh, when she tried the pants on, or been like saying cool things about the shoes. Oh yeah. I well, mean, you had all kinds of opportunities. Nice you move. squandered it. Yeah. I've I've walked around in Old Navy for two and a half hours, and as long as I seemed excited, it was the greatest time ever. Mm. Like, she'd come back with five new pairs of jeans, like, I'm going to try on all these. And I'm like, you better walk out in all of them so I can see every one. I'm super excited. It was the greatest freaking day of her life. Yeah. We walked away with like 130 bucks worth of jeans, but she, like 10 grand worth of happiness. Like, it was insane. Yeah. She was just like, yes. You showed up, and I know your knees hurt, and you hate to be, you're hot and sweaty. Whatever, and Booba, gross. you just blend in with the background. At the uh, at the uh, American Eagle, I don't know what joke you're trying to make there, but <laughs> you're like it didn't land. You're like Joe America, <laughs> yeah, Joe America, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When people I, think of America, they think of yeah, think of that's probably true. We have a very bad obesity <laughs> epidemic happening in the United States right now. Uh, I think I, I got a win life because I, I so I'm starting to understand the concept of like you got to date your wife. 
Like you have to go on dates and have like sp- special time to do that kind of stuff because like we don't have kids now is the perfect time for us to every get night stuck. date night then well yeah. we just it's it's easy for us to get stuck in a rut of being roommates oh, like yeah. it's just like I mean we're just we we hang out in the same place like she watches her shows and I'm on YouTube or what or watching YouTube or something and like you just go to bed and then wake up the next morning and then it's just the day she came home the other night and so sweetly was like hey do you want to go get dinner with me and I'm like yeah sure where do you want to go she goes I want to go to Olive Garden. And I was like, I have no desire to go to an Olive Garden at all. I've never once thought, do you want to go get cheap, gross Italian food? Whoa, like that's high end at my place. Bro. You, you we get watch very excited about it. You Garden. watch your mouth. Right? Yeah. Sponsor? No, yeah. <laughs> I, there's there's such good food out that there. Cut me and deep. It's, it's not at Olive Garden, okay? Mm. But like my wife loves it, and I thought, to, like I, I I had this internal moment where I was like, I have no, I don't want to do that at all. And I even said no. No, I don't want to go there. Let's find somewhere else. Yeah. But like, I, I I fixed it about a minute and a half in where I went, I want to go. Like shot down three ideas. I was like, I want to go to Olive Garden. Unlimited soup, salad, and breadsticks sounds fantastic. Let's go there right now. And we went, and it was a blast. It's so much fun. Just hanging and out delicious. talking about our days. No, it was disgusting. Yeah. It tastes like nothing. Yeah. It's, it's what t- Italian wish it could be. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, <laughs> I, I refuse to throw in my lot with you fellas on that statement. It, it, Olive Garden's disgusting. But it was just, the, the point was, like, it was just the moment to kind of hang out with her. You think then, it's like a bell curve? Not a bell curve. Like a, like a, it's a mountain curve, right? Because I like, I feel like I was same, same curve? principle when I was a younger man. Like, my wife would say, hey, do you want to go out and eat this place? And if I really didn't want to go, I'd be like, yeah, I don't know about that. And then as I got older, like, she would go, I don't care what she said. Hey, <laughs> you want to go eat at uh, Tom's food truck uh, that's uh, three hours away? I'm like, yep. Yep. Sounds great. Tom's food truck. And then, like, as I get older and more grumpy, will I return to my old young man ways and basically go, yeah, I don't want to be driving no three hours, no food truck woman. I don't sound like a good time at all. Yeah, I think you will. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Dan, is this a, this is a Dan, personal are you, anecdote? Are you, uh, are you currently I'm in just saying this possibility. <laughs> I'm not driving trip I mean, at some no point, time. yeah at some point you, you get a little more like you know I, I really know what i like now and it's not that yeah and it's yeah. not you and, so and i will not be going to that i don't need to impress you anymore <laughs> and, and is the true. bell curve just That's by true. quantity of food you've eaten in and i just hit it at 26 uh maybe uh, yeah yeah Ooh. i mean here's the thing and dan's gonna know this more than anybody but marriages progress in a way and so like when you get to the point where you like having your wife check out moles for you and see if they look like they might be a little rougher than they used to be. Yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying? Then maybe the food truck conversation didn't hold as much weight as it used to. For the 11,000th reason now, I feel so bad for your wife. <laughs> look, baby. Hey, it, looks baby. Like, <laughs> it looks like Harvey Cattell. <laughs> Just change color. Babe, I don't want to go out to eat anywhere. No three hours away. Can you take a look at this mole? I'm going to burn it off with apple cider vinegar. Okay. <laughs> Here's a Get the thieves over. I just I'm married to a different kind of woman. I try to hide that kind of thing, and she'll find it. She <laughs> sniffs it out and goes, "Hey, that's disgusting." How, how long? <laughs> so many levels. How long has that been there? I want to look at it, and I'm like, "No, you're not going to look." I said, "Give it a week." It's so a week later. She went, "Hey, now it's time. I want to look at that mole." <laughs> okay, yeah, this is a different. I, your conversations don't apply to me. I'm married yeah. to a different breed. <laughs> this is a different type of person. I mean, yeah, same. My wife is very different than anyone else I've met. Yeah. Don't. All right. All right. Yeah, my wife doesn't know if I have any moles, so I don't know. <laughs> Dan fun goes, relationship Dan comes test. out of the shower in a full suit. Turn off the light. <laughs> Where's we don't my want to see any of that. <laughs> Bring me my bathrobe. <laughs> Woman. Okay. <laughs> I feel super bad, but my, my wife took to wearing a, a ball cap, oh, yeah. and, I, and I hate it. <laughs> and like she, she looks fine in this ball cap right like it's not it's not even a big deal i don't know why i care but like every time she puts his hat on all i see is like some kind of feisty like walkie karen you know what i'm like she doesn't even act in that way she's her same bubbly humble self but like she puts this ball cap on and i instantly am like i'm not mad at her like right now i'm like woman you gotta stop wearing that ball cap i don't like it She's like, whatever, I look fine in a ball cap. I'm like, you do look fine in a ball cap, but you can't wear it. I just, I can't look at this anymore. I can't take you <laughs> cap. So ridiculous. Like, she looks great in this ball cap, and like, I can't take it. Like, I'm just like, you take off that ball cap right now. <laughs> <laughs> we live very different lives, fellas. Okay. Uh, so you're listening to Life from the Path. Um, if you're not a serious person, as uh, indicated by the previous conversation, I don't really care for you to... Uh, Call or text the complaint. I got, here's the thing. If I wasn't bald, I, maybe I wouldn't wear a cap. You know what I'm saying? She's rocking like three foot of hair. She can do it's whatever a, she wants. It's a jealousy thing. And here I am, like a shiny cue ball, 
And like, I got to wear a ball cap. Yeah. I got, otherwise, people get offended. People are like, that guy is bold. You are. You are very hard to take in. I hate not wearing people. a cap. <laughs> yes. That's a valid point. I've seen you multiple times without a hat, and I'm like, I think the only thing that could help this is a hat. Have you ever <laughs> seen the, that? you know who the drummer for Metallica is? Yeah. Lars, Lars? Ulrich? Yeah. yeah. So back in the day, he ran, I mean, a long flowing lock right. of hair. Half down yeah. his hair. Okay. So I happened to catch him playing uh, some show on a radio thing or whatever, scrolling up the, the FB. And he is, he's bald like me, mm. and I can't take him seriously anymore, <laughs> right? I just yeah. look at him and go, you should have got out of this game, man. Yeah. You can't rock anymore. Your life has passed you by. <laughs> no, but if he was wearing a hat, you wouldn't even. Hat, stocking cap, all yeah. these are good options. Your I'm wife should sure. give all of her caps to Lars. No, she should just be disappointed in me that I hate this ball cap so much. <laughs> all of her caps? Huh? <laughs> you know, sometimes I remember that I choose to show up to this place once a week. Uh, okay. And you're, it's a choice. I don't have to. You're listening to Life from the Path with uh, Ben, Dan, Mike, and Oliver Cass. You know what? I'm going to bust out that submit verse and see if I can get that hat out. <laughs> <laughs> you were there. You were there. You, what was it? You, Second Peter? Come on. <laughs> so let me write it down. <laughs> Woman, I've been reading the Lord's Word, and here's the deal. That cap's got to go. I talked to a 22-year-old fella. He seems like he knew a lot. He told me <laughs> about Ephesians. And we're, we're switching internet providers. <laughs> okay. You like Kit Kats again. <laughs> we don't do 521 around here. It's 522. <laughs> as, as some pastors experiment with using artificial intelligence to generate a church sermon, a new study released by Barna shows that the majority of Christians don't believe AI is good for the church. Dan, have you used it? Uh, not like for study. I've, okay. Uh, yeah. Just but, to create just Christmas. Random. I, I would probably be on the answer, danger, danger side of, uh, like, I wouldn't use it. I, I, I don't know who's behind it. Okay. Okay. So, you know. so you say you're you're staying out of it when it comes to sermon sermon usage. Like any type of preparation of okay. teaching. I, I, I'm with the text. Okay. Okay, got it. Mm-hmm. Uh, artificial intelligence, according to IBM, leverages computers and machines to mimic the problem-solving and decision-making capabilities of the human mind. And ChatGPT, a large language model-based chatbot, which understands and generates human-like text, is one of the most popular examples of AI in the public space. In a survey of 1,500 U.S. adults conducted online by Barna in partnership with, who doesn't care, found that a majority of Christians disagree with the statement, AI is good for the Christian church. Some 30, excuse me, 30% of responders said they strongly disagree with the statement, while another 21% said they somewhat disagree, another 27% reported that they don't know. Well, that's pretty high. You're like uh, at 78%. Yeah, I like the honest people who are like, I don't know. Yeah, only 6% of Christians said they strongly agree with the statement, while 16% said they somewhat agree. I feel like the most the common man ain't going to be able to tell. Uh, yeah, what are they basing their their opinions on? Like, I suppose that doesn't say. It's, I don't know, some 29% of U.S. adults um, said, I don't trust it. 35% said, I'm curious about it, while 21% I am fascinated by it. Um, it's a weird scale. Yeah, that is kind of interesting. Oh, uh, it said uh, another breakdown. More than half of the ministry leaders said they were both extremely concerned about ethical or moral issues related to a- using AI in the church and the technology's emergence in the world. Yeah, see, I wouldn't mind if it like helped write a website or yeah, you know, a pamphlet or whatever. Like, who does pamphlets? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you <laughs> wanted to do Christmas cards with AI, so well, that's like art, right? It's it's a yeah. <laughs> Yes. I, don't know. <laughs> I, I, I just seriously don't think anybody would notice the difference, right? Like, I mean, like if you asked AI to write what you were going to present next Sunday, I'd be super interested if you read it and then see if anybody came up to you and said, that doesn't sound like your normal style, or I don't know if that was theologically correct. That's generally how you would pick it out, to be honest with you, is the stylistic things. Like, it, it'll yeah. uh, it'll say things that you wouldn't otherwise say. But, I mean, I don't know. If you were to pay a professional speechwriter, the same thing would occur. Right. Right. Uh, but so, like, why I've used it before. Um, I don't. I don't trust it. I don't trust it for like uh, facts, biblical facts. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do my own study on those types of things, and it, the, primarily the reason is is that like um, AI is only good as the data you fed it. And we've talked about this before. Like, yeah. uh, it's it's these large language models are largely trained on internet garbage, and so mm-hmm. like it treats. Um, it, it does like statistical analysis on matters of opinion, but like um, it, you just don't know. It's not coming from we trust the word of God and is inherently true. Right. Yeah. Although I, you know, I've got it to say things like uh, Jesus Christ is the savior of the world. It just depends where it's picking data up from. So again, I, I don't trust internet data, so I don't trust AIs um, yeah. for the text specifically. There, there, there's an overwhelmingly large number of um, 
uh, people, preachers who are loose with the information. And if it's including that data, that yep. information, right. that's watering down, you know, it, it, that's, that's my fear. Of yes. It. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's right. I think yeah. you do have to check uh, primary sources. As a matter of fact, uh, this came up after uh, the church uh, a recent was is what happened to um elizabeth john the baptist's mother uh Uh, and so if you do the chat uh, if you ask one of the chat bots it'll tell you uh this kind of this long reference story about what happened to her and i'm like i don't that doesn't sound right like where is that from and so i checked so it'll tell you like here are the i said what are the sources uh if it's coming from josephus or like early church fathers or something then like okay even then it's a maybe but maybe um as a historical document it's not. They were sourcing this big, long story from some sort of like Mishnah sound and thing that was created in Chicago in the 1950s. I'm like, OK, yeah. it's not a primary source. Um, now, it's, it is it is helpful to compile like I might use it to ask it a question that I'm curious about and then I'll go check the source. I use it to find sources. It's basically I use it to create me a, a bibliography of which I will then go check primary sources. Yeah, because sometimes otherwise, if you're doing that by hand, you're going book one bibliography. Find those bibliography. And so, like, as long as it's citing its sources, I, at least it, it'll give me a place to go start looking at what the core sources say. So sometimes I'll use it yeah. for that. Um, but I will also use it generally bad at is finding relevant current stories that otherwise reflect biblical principles. Right. I just – I don't know any stories. I'm terrible. I wish – like, I belong in my heart. I wish I was a winsome 60-year-old – preacher who knew all the stories like he had he reached for them it was either something he was involved in or just knew all the things i don't know any of the things and i don't know right. why i can't retain them so like what i might say is i've done searches to say can you tell me any um historical examples that reflect the same uh, principles from this story in the bible um that are from a christian perspective that's why it'll say well jesus was a good man and then it'll find me stories about good people i'm like that's not what i want yeah, um yeah. but i have found interesting stories of the faith uh-huh. that will that are like modern or, or close to modern examples of similar principles and then again you go check the sources you don't take what the thing says but you go okay now take me to the site or to the book and then i can check it um but like it's it's helped me find things that like I wouldn't even know like where do you find people telling stories besides one thousand and one stories to tell your congress there's books like that right right I mean, that's what I was saying in the eighties we would buy but then half of those well, I don't know how many many of those were stories that just were rampantly spread throughout churches but were never true so right. they had no sources right and I thought I couldn't use this most some of them because like I need the same you gotta have the source where, right where did this come from well exactly. you know. They're apocryphal too, like in the yeah. same ways that like they may or may or not be true. Yeah, like the there was actually a gate called the Eye of the Needle. They're like, no, there wasn't. And but <laughs> you said that, and enough pastors said it that it yeah, showed yeah, up exactly. in the illustration book. But then you throw that in the AI, yeah, and it's like, like no, it's not true. true. Yeah, no, no. you've been telling. I read that today in Luke. Yeah, I was like, there's no actual gate. Jesus is Needle once gate. is being funny, but also like he's using a story to, to it's an illustration, not an actual. Oh, technically there is a gate. No, there's not. And no. everybody can walk underneath yeah. it right, like with it, ease. It, it defeats the thought, purpose of the gate. I just thought there was like a fish gate and a mud gate and a needle gate. No, no, those are true. There are fish I know fish gate and mud gate's real. Yeah. I thought needle gate was one of them. Uh, it's just yeah. a water gate? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've heard that's a good salad. Sorry. Oh. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. The, the caution. Uh, I understand. The one thing. Here's what I would say. Um, this, this is inevitable. This is the Thanos. It's, a, it's, gonna, it's happening. You know what I'm saying, Boob? <laughs> Don't point at me because yeah. you know that I love Marvel. I love Marvel. I'm such a fanboy. <laughs> wow, Boob, you sound like a real loser. When ben, 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 hey, I'm already married. I don't care. <laughs> Mrs. Marvel is the is the Christ-like character, and I appreciate that. Hey, that movie tanked. You see that? It was terrible. Yeah, it's, going well. it's done poorly. Uh, anyway. Marvels? So, so uh, Yeah, the Marvels. Or yeah, whatever one just came out. Yeah. Okay. All right, oh, hey, go ahead, nerd protest. 515-517-0085. Don't, you don't have to do that. Booba it's not Miss Marvel, it's the Marvels. Booba wants to give you a hook. Uh, yes, I do. Anyway, um, so it, it is inevitable, and so here's what I would say, is that like, um, kind of the conversation Dan and I were just having, uh, be aware of its limitations. Know how it functions, know, like, know enough about it to know, like, um, to react to it in such a way that isn't, isn't totally blind. Um, but recognizes the risks to it. I, this will continue to be disruptive in society. I don't. I don't think you. You don't have a. I'm not saying you have to use it or anything. But like, should you be able to? Um, 
and the risks that are associated with it, the very ways in which it could change society. Yes, yes, you should be totally aware of that. And um, I, I wouldn't, if there's ways in which you can use it well for Jesus, then I, I don't, there's no reason you can't. But like, it's the same reason, like, you shouldn't just pick up the 1001 illustration book. Uh, it's it's a resource. Doesn't mean the stuff is right. true. It's not actually scripture. And so use it with caution. Yeah. And so yeah. that's how I would say it. Definitely. Okay. You're listening to live from the path. Uh, hey, if you want to try something funny, you could say, you could ask the uh, Google Bard or the chat GPT how you should respond to this very question that Live from the Path was asking, and then uh, text it back to us on the complaint line. I'm kind of curious. Does it answer the same every time? No. No. Hmm. That can't be right. Uh, no, it's because it's 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 recreating. Um, actually, that's one of the hardest things about it, and this is why you will struggle to use it in some commercial applications, is because it actually isn't predictable. Um, it will not use, it will tend not to use the same language every time, uh, because a human generally wouldn't. Um, and it's using, it's, it's, so, so if you think about it, it's based on relationships, relationships, um, words. And so it breaks down, this is why it, when you train an, uh, an AI system or an algorithm system, you're, you're having to put in like, you know, thousands, tens of thousands, millions of lines of data, because what you're hoping is that through all this information that's gone in there, it can start drawing relationships to when someone puts a question mark in something, people tend to respond like this. And then you're training the technology to have a notion of what is a question. So if someone goes, hey, I have a question now, it's got a reference point on what to call all of these things that are in here. And so like what you're getting is um, it's all the um, statistical, it's best attempt is here's what I think you're asking about based upon the 10 million things I had, I analyzed. And so I'm going to spit it back to you, but I'm going to use language that a uh, human would, because you were trained on human language, you're trained on books and movies and all these kinds of things. And so that's what it's doing. Like you're still getting a statistical representation of what it thinks you want back. And it's never, it's not going to be the same thing every time. Wait, can you ask it to show you stuff like classified documents? You can ask. Or things that like do because they're under wraps. Yeah, but it wouldn't you have access. Ask that, it, but would, yeah. it wouldn't have access. It's to not that. a part of what it was trained on. Could you ask it when you use a colon? Yes. And it'll tell you. It will tell you. That'd be good. Actually, did you like this was a lot of it, this was interesting because a lot of what the the recent strikes, so like the writer strike and the Hollywood actor strike we're trying to figure out what to do with AI. The writers were upset for a number of reasons. First of all, um, a lot of these language models were trained on scripts that these people wrote. And so in effect, if you take the scripts for the Harry Potter movies and you expose them to AI and then you say, write me a new Harry Potter movie in the style of the existing Harry Potter movies, it required someone else's intellectual property to otherwise create something brand new without them. And so as a writer, are you worried about what it can do? I, you should be. Yes. Because it's pretty good at it. If, if there's enough information available and like it's trained on, you know, famous works by people and other scripts and things. And so can you churn out um, on Netflix or Amazon Prime, you watch one movie and then you find out there's 10 other movies that are basically the exact same plot. They just changed the country or something, the cultural background or switch the genders like AI can churn out all like easy. So easy. can I create my own AI based purely on only my sermons? Yes. So I yeah. could say. Write a sermon in the style of me? Yes. Because I don't feel... Yes. Yes. Oh, okay, it's I'm not in. a whole lot of data you're <laughs> dropping into it, but yeah. I mean, because it's my da data. It's, my, it's what I've done. No, I agree. Yes. Yeah. I got 40 years of data sitting there yeah. waiting. Yes. You totally could do yeah. that. And I've actually considered that because that's that's interesting uh -huh. um, because you're asking, right, you're only feeding it stuff that's relevant to you. You're not, you know, it's not getting poisoned somewhere else. And then uh, it, it becomes, a, in effect, like a very quick, uh, like an efficient search function. Mm -hmm. What would I say in this? Well, based upon all the other things you said, here's probably what you would say. See, I could, I could say that. I, I also don't like that, though, <laughs> I mean, in honesty, because like I'll look back at stuff I did even five years ago and think, yep. man, that is shallow or exactly. that is like, right. awful. Um, but and I might, that will be I might, where it pulls from. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's like so I would never grow because I haven't studied past it. Actually, that's what's – it was super interesting because we've been working through some of this stuff in my in kind of my – my day job and like one of the questions is like oh we could probably get ai to come in and help with this particular thing and my question back was that thing because the only way to train it is based upon our previous efforts and if we're not good all your training is to be yeah. very fast right. at producing something that is the a level of which we're not particularly happy with and so you gotta that's the key question just like the internet data is a cesspool uh, the information that otherwise that you feed AI, if it's not your best representation of yourself, you're not going to get the outcome that you want. 
And it, what one of the interesting things that it does, if you look societally, is um, one. It will not. Um, this is one of the big fears, right? We'll start to think beyond us. Yeah. Right. Will it plateau us or go beyond? Will it go right. beyond us? Now, it could plateau you because if you simply rely on – and we do this with Google today. Like you take the first search result and go, oh, well, that must be true. Yeah. Like the critical thinking, the thing that pushes beyond a current idea and becomes something that is essentially new or unique, um, it, that, that isn't what AI currently is structured for. Uh, the singularity or the part like mm-hmm. the part where like things really shift is if you start cr- seeing a creation of uniqueness – of something that was not cumulative around things that people were thinking. But one of the things that may happen is it will, uh, back to, to Buba, you know, Buba, inevitable that it will see patterns that humans don't see because we have a bias. It's mm-hmm. not because yeah. we, weren't, we didn't have the information at our disposal. Right. It's we did not see them in this way because we, we see things in the way – like we have an inherent bias. As, like as an example, uh, in the situation that I was talking about, hey, are we even good at this? We primarily ask the people who that's their current job. Well, they're not going to go, oh, yeah, we're pretty bad at this. They're going to go, oh, no, we think we're pretty good. People mm-hmm. uh, people as a whole generally would say we're pretty good at this. Um, as a matter of fact, like if you ask a bell curve of, hey, our, uh, how uh, – what was the what was the example? It was a really good one. Like if you ask 100 people, are they pretty good at their job, most people would say they're pretty good at it. But it, it's a bell curve. Like on a bell curve, half the people have to be worse than most of the other – like than the other half of the people. But most people believe they're better than most everybody else. Yeah. We have a bias in how we think about it. And so what will feel like an intelligence because, oh, like just a massive amount of data and consumption like reveals a reality that we hadn't thought of. It's not that you hadn't thought of. You just said we're blind. We had a intelligence. It's kind of an inevitability that we didn't really see. And this is where you get to the, like the iRobot type of stuff, <laughs> like where it says, oh, for your own protection, we start taking these actions because humans aren't being thoughtful. And the, the, this is the one caution is like it has no sense of morality. Mm-hmm. And so human – if you look back at you, – you load in thousands of years of human behavior – uh, killing, like murder in the name of conquest, is going to feel very normalized. It was okay. We think it's all right. Um, and so, like, it, it cannot make moral decisions. And that is the one thing that continues, will always remain unique about humans, is to bear the image of Jesus and re- react in a moral way of which facts are not sufficient. Human behavior does not prescribe a morality. It simply reflects either the absence of or the presence of a morality. And so, anyway— all kinds of interesting stuff going on in there. I, I, I would my encouragement to everyone is to um, just don't. I think it's going to continue to permeate, and there will be consequences. And so it's best to just have your eyes open about it. You're listening to Life on the Path. Sorry if you checked out. You might have checked out on that one. My bad. I don't. Uh, I don't care. No. I, I I just I, you know what I'm saying. I just like to wait till the consequence happens and goes. See, that's what I thought. <laughs> what might happen? I understand. <laughs> I can't even get logged into one. Okay, uh, cards on the table. I thought Ben's doing cool stuff with his AI. Maybe I'll try some stuff. Dude, just go to then type in like, Google Bard. Then you're like, hey, give me your email address. I'm like, what do you need that for? You, no, I ain't gonna give you my email address. Go to Google Bard. Is it free? Yes. Yeah. Do you have free. to you have to give me your email address? No. They probably already have it, don't they? Yeah, it's it's uh, Google. Google. Yes, they you. have your stuff. They already know you. You might. I as well put tell my me. name yeah. in my email address. Was that a mistake? No, it's an identifier. <laughs> they already like know your you. name. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've seen your ads on everything you've got online. They know everything about you. And the Google, the the Bard is helpful uh, because it can actually uh, go through web content. Right. Like it can, modern. If you publish something, it can reference modern web content. ChatGPT only it was trained on data as recently as January of 2022, mm-hmm. and so like. I said, uh, as a matter of fact, I was trying to get it to summarize the Live from the Path episodes for me. Because I keep going back and rewriting the um, episode uh, <laughs> liner notes. Back. And I thought, well, this should just write it for me. Because it's really good at this. Yeah, right. It is really good at li- like Figure analyzing an audio file and, and producing a summary. Yeah. And so uh, I thought, boy, that's... Now, it doesn't seem to be able to do it quite right. But I give it another... Like, it can't, it jump it can't around find the lot. audio file. <laughs> right. But, and it's going to get better. Oh, no, yeah. like Slam Dunk, though, if you could upload, like I use, there's another service that I use. I don't use it for Life from the Path, but I use it for a different podcast. But like if I upload a file, um, it gives me just a great summary. Fantastic. Like, yeah, I'm Mike, super just, impressed. Just type in Google Bard. It'll take you to it. Okay. I'm going to look into it. All right. Okay, Mike, you're up. What's the, well, go back to the communion question. Okay, here's the question. Okay. It's not a question. It's a statement. Statement. Do not deny anyone communion, ever. Communion is not a reward. 
It is not a privilege for the righteous. It is an invitation to step towards God's table where everyone has enough and everyone a place. Remember, Jesus fed Judas. So I had an answer to it. Like someone sent this to me and like I read it and I thought, uh, okay, uh, yeah. Like basically they were asking, what do you think of this? And uh, I molded over for just a little bit. And then like I came to a conclusion and I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what you guys think. So first of all, like, do you agree with that? Do not deny anyone communion ever. Communion is not a reward, is not a privilege for the righteous. Invitation to step towards God's table where everyone has enough and everyone a place. It's, uh, it, it frames it unfairly. The people who are having reasonable conversations around who takes communion are not going, it's because it's for the righteous. So, like, I, I'm, I'm mistrustful of, how, of what this person has said simply because they framed, they created a straw man. They framed it as if that's where people are trying to do something exclusive um, because it be, due to arrogance or something, yeah. and that's not right. It's not framed. It's a good question, but it's poorly framed, uh, and it's not. It's not uh, in for good purpose. But that doesn't like. Isn't there? Isn't there plenty of churches out there that like hold back communion because I you're not a member that. of the church? Oh sure. And yeah. like, if you yes. like, because you're not a member of the church, we can't vouch for the fact that you're taking communion as a as a person of Christ. Yeah. Yes. And so is this not in response to something like that? Uh, it, it could be, but, but um, even those, which I think are flawed, I think they're wrong, uh-huh. um, are trying to protect something that they believe is biblical. Um, and so like they're talking – they're looking at Paul who says kind of examine yourself before you take communion. And they go, mm-hmm. how, well, if this person is not a follower of Jesus, how could they examine themselves? Okay. Like are we – lest you take judgment – what they believe oftentimes for being kind with people is that they're protecting you. Mm-hmm. That you're not taking right, yeah. some, not something which could otherwise draw judgment upon right. you because you took it flippantly. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think – I think we're not um, – I don't think that's quite reading what Paul is getting at fully. Mm-hmm. but. In, in, in I think a lot of their positions, they think what they're doing is a protection, not a restriction. You know what I'm saying? So like yeah. you would have to frame what that guy said differently. Like, mm-hmm. hey, you're misunderstanding what Paul is after. You're not actually protecting people. But that what, what what they've presented is you've got a bunch of mustache twisters who are going, I'm better than you. I take it. You don't. But that isn't largely what most of them are thinking. No, okay. I don't think so. I like I, I think part of like what I basically ran to was I don't think it's within our scope to know whether you should be taking communion or not. I'm not equipped to make that call, right? Like with the things that Paul said in mind, mm-hmm. I don't think it's un- to, um, the way that the Bible speaks about taking communion or what it's intent right. is for, you know? And like, it doesn't, it seems less of an invitation to like sit down and have a meal in community. It seems more of an in- invitation to participate in your redemption. Right. Like as an as an outward act of saying, like, like, this is my sin and, and the blood spilled for it. Right. So, like, it's not so much it's it's I think he's making a little and I'm not this guy that, like, tells people they can't have communion. I actually don't feel that way. But I also think that, like, there is a danger in in acting like it doesn't mean what Jesus said it means. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're basically participating in. The sanctification of of your sin, right? And celebrating the fact that it was done. And so if it has not been done in you, or that does not carry any weight in you, I don't think it's unnecessary or mean or cruel or exclusive to be like, look, I, this doesn't mean anything to you, you know? And like, and the situation where most people take communion, like it's revered in a way. Mm-hmm. And the to want to participate in it when it doesn't mean anything to you. But like I don't think like I couldn't make that judgment on someone else to know whether they're in the space to take it or not. And so like I wouldn't think I ever would do that. But I I I wouldn't say it would be unkind to another person to explain communion yeah. and what it means. <laughs> so so let's get to let's let's just read what what Paul's talking about real quick cuz I think this tends to be the crux of it. This is in 1 Corinthians 11. Um so most times we start here. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. Paul says there's effects to this. Yes, it matters if you do this in an unworthy manner. And so, most places where the things, there's some of these restrictions exist, it's a protection. We're saying, look, if you don't understand what you're doing, or you're doing it blindly, um, you may be taking it in an unworthy manner. Now, 
The question is, what does it mean to take it in an unworthy manner? And contextually, is there a relevance to it? So let's, right. let's back it up just a hair and start in verse 20. Uh, Paul says, so when you come together, it is not the Lord's supper you eat. For when you are eating, some of you go ahead. As a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing. See, the con- this is what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. Like, he's, he, there's a context to it that isn't, oh, am I worthy to be reminded that Jesus died for my sins? That doesn't make any sense. Right. We're thinking about it wrong. But he's he's talking about churches of which you are disrespecting the notion of communion by basically, like, mistreating the people that are around you and using your position of power or wealth uh, and, and flaunting in front of other other people. Like, that's what he's getting at. Are you mistreating other people? This goes back. Remember we were talking about, like, it matters how you treat other people? Yeah. Um, And there are consequences. Like, you can't just do the things that God asks and then mistreat other people around you and expect to have your prayers heard and, like, your your, um, fasting acknowledged or whatever. That's this. That's what he's talking about. So he continues, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body for you and remember of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, in light of those things, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. And so what this isn't prescribing is that let, there is a thorough evaluation of a human judge to say, are you okay to take communion or not based upon your sinful state? I think we agree to that. When the whole picture is an acknowledgement of your sinful state. Yeah. <clears throat> right? Yeah. So, like, I, I think that that's where to be cautious. You don't do it. Um, I, it's not even a caution of doing it flippantly. Like, he's primarily talking about the react, like treating it casually in such a way that it demeans the other people who are around you and exa- and like um, identifies your, I don't know, your wealth. Yeah. And so that's where I actually got a little bit off track when he's like, remember, Jesus fed Judas. I'm like, this is not a meal, right? Like mm-hmm. this is like there's there's the Bible is set up like having meals together as a strong sense of community and something you like. But like, like a meal, that's not what its intent is for. But it was during the Passover, wasn't it? Oh, like it was during the Passover meal that they yeah, were sure. together. Yeah, and the other church often did it as a as part of a meal. Like they didn't have a separate. Most early churches' celebrations did not treat it like a separate communion time. Like they would do meals. Now there is actually very clear evidence document documented in church history that like second century, third century churches. They would do communion as like a specific thing as part of their gathering, and it wasn't a full meal. And if you were not a baptized believer in Jesus, you did not take communion. Mm-hmm. They would they 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 invited you to leave. See, I think I think my my understanding of this, the context of the unworthy, is based more on uh, twenty three. Uh, anyway, the, the I moved my phone here. The the twenty five and twenty six about about are you acknowledging his blood, his covenant, the covenant thing. Um, if you don't acknowledge Jesus as the Messiah, son of the living God, and that this blood was his new covenant, then you're taking it in an unworthy manner. You're just saying, oh, it's snack time. You know, it's like, oh, everybody's doing it, which is, a uh, uh, that's always been my understanding of, of the, the unworthy manner that would cause sickness. It's like you're, you're, you're not acknowledging Jesus for who he is while you're participating in his covenant meal. Um, yeah, so maybe it's a slight. Uh, yeah, I suppose. I suppose the question is: is how far far does the context go? Yeah, does it yeah, start yeah, in twenty three? Yeah. Does it start in twenty? I think it starts in twenty. Dan's in for twenty three. We're open to taking bets. Yeah, but I, but in either case, well, so here, so this is where this becomes a question, though. Is it, so? I think if it's on twenty three, the question becomes: Paul, uh, think of how Paul treats um, meat sacrificed to idols. So, like, how is how is this different? If some guy shows up and drinks, if the wine itself isn't special, the blood is not. Like, it's not. It's not the wine. It's not the bread. It's the thing that we're offering it up to some guy who doesn't quite understand most of what, which is most everybody who don't really understand fully what they're doing. Like, wh- where is what is the line of which like is now um, meat sacrifice to idols doesn't matter, but communion does matter. It causes causes sickness for the Paul knowledge that does not have any impact somewhere else. And this gets into the Catholic question of like, do, do you actually treat it as transubstantiation? It becomes yeah. blood. Yeah. It becomes body. Because if you believe that, that's actually where a lot of this type of thing comes from. You got to, we harass the Catholics, but like they're not unthoughtful. 
here. Um, and, and so I think that's a lot of where that discussion comes from. But so uh, overarching, um, I, I'm less worried about like I, the, 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 the things that he pointed out, I think, are not really the things that are on the table. Uh, although there are unthought to move it to your point. I think there are unthoughtful people, um, pastors, other people, other certain denominations who are not actually being looking at this for what it is. Like they would say, oh, you're an unmarried mother. You can't take communion here. OK, yeah. no. Or like actually when I go visit a Catholic church, I'm not allowed to take communion right. at their church. Right. And like they don't know he'll be a hill of beans about me. Right. Now, again, the, the, I think the Catholic church would say they're trying to protect you. Yes. Um, but I, I, I just, I'm not sure that's the right reading. It shouldn't be treating it as a righteousness thing. However, so as an example, I don't, I don't allow my kids. I did not allow my children to take communion until they were baptized. Um, part of me said church, no reason for them not to get like used to it. But like, there is something about a transition for like, you've acknowledged this thing with your, with the evidence of your life. And so you get you get to join um, what the church is doing in this particular celebration um, that you don't otherwise take part in without that admission. But and, and the, the, he would be after me because I'm saying like it's a privilege. Um, I mean, yes, I mean, kind of, but it's more so like, do you understand what you're what you're doing? I won't bat- even if my four year old said, will you baptize me? I won't because like they don't understand what they're asking. And it feels like if I want them to have their own faith. I want them to understand what is it they're doing. Now, both of my kids got baptized relatively young where I'd like, you should ask to a conversation we were having earlier. Like, I think I'd want to make sure. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of boils down to a relationship question, right? Like, yeah. like I would hold my own children or people I knew very, very well to say, look, I need you to understand exactly what it means that when you're taking communion, you know, and like, uh, but I would never make that ball or strike call on no. some rando that came into the church. They're like, I love Jesus. I'm like, take communion. Yeah. Great. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know them. And arbiter of things that God did not purvey me to know, you know? Right. Yes. And, well, and so the, que- the question then is, is if you thought you were doing it, uh, is it not a responsibility of a church? Or group of people who love Jesus to protect other people from potentially taking this in an unworthy manner. Because what you just said makes it sound like it's not really even your responsibility. Well, I mean, I once again, I think that it's just not the God that I think that I... When Paul attaches, like, consequence to doing it incorrectly, it almost feels like intent was done to do it incorrectly. Right? Like, like purposely ignoring a thing, like, that, that God had instructed... Um, folks to do and they were they were purposely I mean, they're not getting drunk it. off the wine yeah, correct right and so this is like food. you you know how this is supposed to go you are subverting it you're perverting the thing that god had created where like um i i just don't imagine that like you're right when the first time i took communion i had no idea what i was actually doing even even in my age of taking communion forever do i understand the full consequence of the bread and the cup no wouldn't even have the opportunity to sin if that full weight had sat on me because I would be in such stark realization of the situation that I am in that I would just there would be no logical choice to ever go against the thing that he told me to do you know and like I just don't have the aptitude as a broken human to pull that off and so like I don't know that I can make distinctions amongst other people on where they're at or whether there's even a level they need to be at to take this communion but to wrap all that up I don't think you're being unkind to them <clears throat> By telling them, <laughs> you know, like if yeah. you th- if you think that they might be taking it in an unworthy manner, there's I mean, there's nothing unkind to say, hey, real quick, let's talk about what communion means and why. And and, uh, you know, just just make sure that we're where we need to be when we're talking to Jesus about these things, you know, and like if they take it poorly, they weren't trying to take it right in the first place. If they take it well and back themselves out, they'll be like, I know a guy that like he grew up as a Christian and like it was it was a little rule heavy. And like in the environment that he grew up in, like Jesus was more of an overlord than he was a savior. And like he'll go to church now and he still won't take communion. He's the right place for this. And like, am I like, hey, man, I think God's after you because pe- people who God ain't after don't know that. Right. Like they wouldn't even consider right. it a problem, you know, but still on the on the flip side, like, can I respect a guy that's like, I just I don't know if I'm in the right place for this. You're like, you're darn right. I can. You know what I'm saying? Like, because somebody explained it to him at some point. Maybe a little bit rube heavy, but whatever, explained it to him, you know? And so, like, I think it's it's very one-sided to shade it as if we're denying people communion because of our own righteousness. I don't know very many Christians that would do that. There are some, you know, 
But like, I don't know anybody I know would not say you can't have communion because we're better than you. Like you've, you've had to read zero parts of that Bible to even make that statement about anything. <laughs> okay. I've always um, approached that as it's the Lord's supper, not mine. Mm-hmm. I don't invite you to it. I don't deny it to you. Yeah. He does. And then, but then, uh, along with teaching what it is and letting them know, there's hey, there could be some risk if you're not. Yeah, and you usually know. it bears itself out as a guy that like just started coming, take, and his life is still in the toilet, and he feels terrible. He's got no freedom, and he goes, Pastor, can I talk to you? I'll meet you on Tuesday. And he's like, Hey, I've been taking communion. I've been reading my Bible a little bit, and uh, blah blah blah. And you're like, Hey, man, like your life does not reflect that you know a savior at all. Like you're walking around in chains, like your prayers are are vaporizing before they get there, right? Let's talk about what that looks like. <laughs> right. If someone came into your church and goes, uh, oh, great, a great sermon, Pastor, do you mind if I swim in your tank? Like you would go, no, it's not It's not really what the tank is for. Let me talk to you what the tank is for. And someone comes in and goes, hey, man, can I have a hit of that uh, wine you got over there? Uh, no, it's not just everyday drinking wine. Uh, in fact, if you're hungry or thirsty, we'll, we'll find you some food. But yes. like that's actually for a particular thing. Let's... <laughs> Yeah. When you're ready to use it for that thing, awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, I think it's I think it's okay. I think it's okay to hold um, some things are okay as traditions. I, I think we're caught. The caution, general caution, would be: Do people start to misunderstand God because of how you're administering your communion? That would that's the risk to me. Like, am I am I holding a firmer line or a line that Jesus never held? Am I misrepresenting God's holding a line like the again the ones? Hey, you're an unwed mother. You can't take communion. Stop it. Like what the, the communion is acknowledgement of our sinfulness and of God's provision in such a thing. And so like everybody needs to take it. Um, but like that, those are the risks past that. Like, again, I, I don't think God's up there like, Oh, well, I really hate the tradition of the Thompson family that they wait until they're baptized. Okay. I mean, what is it? What did it, to what consequence was it? Yeah. So I, yeah, I'm less worried about that. Hmm. Hmm. All right. You're listening live from the path. Thanks for hanging out with us this evening. We're going to give out, uh, just a little bit of advice, and then we'll uh, cut you loose for the night. You ready? You're live from the path. That knows. Over the past few months, due to extenuating circumstances, I've been spending a couple of days a month at my sister's. While there, I sometimes had the feeling that something was crawling on me, but thought it was just the idea of being somewhere other than my home. Last time, however, I woke up during the night, not only with the crawling feeling, but also the sound of buzzing in my ear. I also noticed that when I sat in the spot where I usually do, bugs were getting in my hair. Now my sister is asking me when I want to come and stay for a couple of days again. I don't want to hurt her feelings. What should I do? Hey, sis, you got bugs at your place. I'm not staying there. Yeah, man. Doesn't that seem right? That seems right. Yeah. 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 In fact, maybe you should get out for a while. (laughs) Just come stay at my place. Like decontaminate and then stay at my house while they fumigate your joint. I don't know what kind of slitty, city slicking haircut you got. But, like, can you at least identify the bug? Like, can you look at it and be like, hey, it was a bed bug, or hey, it was a wasp, or hey, it was a fly, or hey, it was a ladybug, right? This is, is real important on the state of whether you should stay there or not. If it's a ladybug, a wasp, or a fly, this is regular living. Yeah. Uh, if it's a bed bug or a termite, then, uh, yeah, I mean, we probably should bring it up. Yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. This conversation's weird. What do I say? You have, you have bugs. Yeah, yeah. man. You yeah. have bugs, Betty. <laughs> I can't imagine a situation in which I wouldn't be able to say that to my sibling. Yeah. yeah like, yeah, yeah. if I'm comfortable enough with my sibling to stay with them once a month for <laughs> right. a couple of days, yet I'm not comfortable enough to go, Sally, what's going on here? Are you leaving a window open or something? Like, what's happening? There's bugs all over your place. Yeah. Growth down there. And yeah, I, it, it's interesting because, like, a lot of times these these advice questions act like... If you don't say a reality, then it isn't a reality. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, it's already a reality. Your sister has bugs in her house. How much do you not love her to not bring it up and go, hey, man, ignore whether you're going to stay there. Your sister's sleeping in them. I she's bet she knows. bugs over. Yeah, I bet she knows. You're not telling her new information. Right. And if and maybe she's embarrassed about it. But, like, Or maybe it's ladybugs and you're weird. Oh, that's true. She could be significantly overreacting. There's the Japanese beetles on you. Yeah. Yeah. But would it be passive aggressive just to, like, for Christmas, get a bunch of bug bombs? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Dan. Yes. Yes, it would. What if you didn't just, do it for However, asking. you should make an AI generated Christmas card. <laughs> what if you didn't do it for Christmas? What if you just said, hey, I'm here to help and you brought a bunch of bug material? I mean, have a conversation beforehand. Oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> like it's weird to just show up out of nowhere with some raid 
and be like, it's time to take care of this problem, Sally. I thought you might want some. That's true. Or do you, I, or I do you order it or slim fat? Yes. All of that <laughs> is like, yeah, yeah don't it. show up with that without conversation. Be like, hey, man, here's the deal. I you would have captured one of these things immediately. Ben, look at it. Right. Here's the bastard. Why? Yeah. Look at this guy. <laughs> you, do you know about him? What a, right. Get him one of those little zapper lights, you know. I mean, I, just, I appreciate the utility that you're putting Inside forward in this situation. The like, you better know your bugs, and if you don't, you better look them up. Now, well, that's the thing. It's like, this, it really does matter what kind of bug it is. <laughs> right? Like, I, you know, especially if you're, like, sleeping in a basement or something. Like, it could be all kinds of stuff. If yeah. it's a cockroach. Yeah, then, I think bugs, I think cockroach. Yeah. But they don't fly, do they? And they don't buzz. They screech. Right. Right. Anyway, the type of animals I'm thinking of are not harmful insects, and they're just regular living, depending on where you live. That's true. I had those um, the the, the box elder bugs, oh, yeah, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, uh, I probably had like fifty of them in yeah. inside my shed. Yeah. Recently, like whatever, it's a finished shed, and I'm sitting there taking a work meeting. I'm looking up, and there's like all kinds. I'm like, well, I'm a yeah. very gross person, but I mean. What are you going to do? They were normal. They'll crawl out of the outlets. You yeah. could have thought that for any situation. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, I'm a pet generally Geico. gross person. Agreed. <laughs> I've had those box elder bugs, like like trip breakers at my house. Like they get uh, up what? all in a light fixture together, and then they bzz, they just zap themselves done. <laughs> or if I go to change a light out or something, and there'll be like 40 of them come flying out of there yeah. and land on me. And you're like, this is gross. But I mean, what are you supposed to do? Like, I mean, the place is as tight as it's going to get. Yeah. There's These just bugs. Kind of harmless, I think. I mean, yeah, yeah, I don't think this is that big of a deal. I think you should just be like, hey, I was sleeping down there, and like these bugs keep waking me up. Have you noticed any bugs at your place? She's like, no, I haven't. Well, we should probably look into it. I'll see if I can't catch one. We'll figure out whether this is a real problem or not. See if I can't catch one. Yeah. Yeah. I just got a real Steve Irwin way of looking at this. You'd be part of the solution, not the problem. Yeah. Secular. Yeah. Secular says, what you should do is level with your sister. Explain that during the last few visits, you have felt something crawling or buzzing while you were in bed, and you also noticed some insects getting into your hair. Your sister's home may have an infestation of some kind, which won't get any better until she calls a pest control company. I mean, that's not true. There's some homegrown ways to make this thing happen. Yeah, like an apple cider vinegar tra- trap. It's compelling. The bugs, the bugs love it. You know what they like? Um, no, that's not true. Never mind. They like poop, Ben. That was gossip. Yeah. I won't okay. say Last one, ready? Thanos. Dear life from the path, my husband is dead. Oh, man. Was it Thanos? Quiet. I have two grandsons, 42 and 39, and a great-grandson living with me. Oh, boy. boy. The whole family. Grandsons are 42 and 49? 42, 39, and then a great-grandson who's 24. Mm -hmm. None of them are married. I don't allow overnight guests. This morning at 3, I heard a girl come upstairs from the downstairs bedroom to get another girl. I was livid. Am I wrong to give them walking papers? I've told them before this was a no-no. You, they thought I was sleeping. You okay? So you are presu- You are uh, the grandmother to people in their forties. <laughs> no, no. Yes, forty-two and thirty-nine. Forty-two and thirty-nine. With, like, don't have a husband, and your grandchildren and great grandchildren, all adults, live with you. Yeah. And you say no, ladies, and they say, "Forget you, grandma." Yeah. I'm going to bring in a, a gal. Two gals, in fact. Kick them out now. Yeah. They, yeah. I don't even know why they're living they're there in done. the first right. place. Right. Boot them. They need to go. Unless there's some kind of, like, disability we don't know about that in which they can't. They can obviously bring in I ladies. doubt that's the situation. Kick them out. Yeah. They could collectively get together 250 bucks a month and find a nice joint. I don't know if you can get a nice joint for two fifty. Uh, well, sorry, I mean each two fifty oh. each. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, they need, yeah, they should have gone a long time ago. I think you have a heart that thinks that you are helping oh. them. Now wait a minute, she may enjoy their company. She doesn't say that. Yeah, but she might. She That's may, possible. but they're willing to walk all over. Yeah, no, yeah, I, she doesn't I, enjoy them you anymore. You can kick them out. Yeah, boot them. Yeah. yeah, in fact, if they don't come and visit you after you boot them, I guess you knew where you really Crap. stood. Is there a Jesus thing in here that she should forgive them? Oh, you can forgive, forgive, him. forgive him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone but not agrees. let him stay, right? They can still go. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. And don't serve him communion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, un- that's unworthy. Not on my God. <laughs> yeah. Three in the morning, lady communion. Not going to happen. Okay, so is there any... Lady communion is the worst thing you've ever if said. If this is the first time that this has happened, is there any reason to have a grace period? Or do yes. you think she's been clear enough? I think what? she's been clear enough. Yeah, 42 and 39. Yeah, yeah they don't... Yeah, that's true. They're old enough. They don't need to be... Now, I don't, maybe you didn't understand what I meant. When I said no ladies, no ladies in my home. Oh, we thought you were sleeping. You idiots. You absolute boobs. Get out of our house. If yeah. you thought this was all right, you'd have brought these ladies over for a dinner. 
and right. then just let them stay, right? Like you wouldn't be sneaking them in the door after you thought Meemaw went to bed. Hey, yeah. listen here. I'm just going to throw this out there. Ladies, do not agree to a situation of which you're being snuck around. Right. Right. You just saying, absolutely. This this man is not worthy of me. There's got to be a forty and thirty something year old woman sneaking around. Yeah. It's like right. <laughs> uh, really, you're a teenager. That's I mean, a valid point. Right. You are worth so so much more than being snuck around and hidden. Right. Don't wake my grandma. Come on. <laughs> yeah. What what low bar do you set for? Uh, in the best case scenario, you're with the twenty three year old great grandson. Come on. Yeah. You're an adult woman. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, here we go. Segular says, if you prefer not to have men mating like rabbits under your roof while all you oh, have is a book, boy, your wishes should prevail. What's it? What's the? Did she say something about a book? Oh, yeah. She was reading a book. She oh. wasn't asleep. At three Meemaw's, in the morning? Meemaw's yeah. never sleep. Yeah. Like 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. and then are up the rest of the night. Yeah. Mm. It's one of those things that leaves you as you get old. You yeah. just can't sleep for beans. Yeah. Mm. Uh... Your wishes should prevail. It's your house, your rules. It's time those boys found a place of their own, and you were within your rights to insist upon it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Where, what, where are the parents at? Like, if this is grandma. Uh, unmentioned. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I feel like that whole family situation might be a little bit of a hairy mess, and so, everybody taking advantage of the only person that can seem to hold down a job or have a place of their own. That is, is chance, tough. Is there a chance that Meemaw just, just made this all up? Oh, like, is there a chance that Meemaw like thought she heard a lady, but what really she heard was just the fact that she ladies? has three grown men in her house? Mm-hmm. I think the fact that three grown men are living in her house is enough evidence for me that she didn't make up nothing. I Maybe suppose that's cats. what I'm hey. Yeah, I just feel like I think I feel like there's certain situations in which a Meemaw kind of gal might go, "I hear y'all up there," and it's just Meemaw. There's nobody here, and that's a real thing. Ooh. That's mm. tricky. I'm gonna tell you this though, <laughs> under self deceit, this happened to me last week. It was only a split second, but I dropped off. Uh, I was bringing my oldest daughter home from basketball, and I dropped her, uh, one of the other ladies off at, at her house, and we were driving home. And it was like a dirt road, dark, like super late at well, not super late at night. But anyway, there was like a split second where for some reason, like no joke, I thought, what if she had died like when she was young and my 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 mind just couldn't process it. And like I'm imagining that my oldest daughter is actually here and she's not. What? This was a, it was creepy. Yeah, it's horrifying. It was not a long period of time, but like a yeah. note, but I believed it. Like tangibly, it felt like, oh no, she's been dead for years. I'm and I'm, movie. I'm, I'm imagining this. Is you should get AI to write that. Yeah. It's a, it feels like a, maybe it's, it's from somewhere. I mean, it's yeah. partially Silent Hill. Or, or, uh, uh, what was the guy where there's a big surprise of Bruce Willis? Uh, uh, oh, Sixth Sense. Yeah, yeah Sixth Sense. Is that part of that? I I've not seen any of these things recently. <clears throat> yeah, but no, like, nothing like that. It but... just stopped and it was gone immediately. But like, it was weird how much like ran through my mind in such a short amount of time. Sitting like me doing nothing. Yeah. And uh, there's anyway, it was there's weird. There's some weird plots of Silent Hill where like he goes to find his his wife who may have abducted their daughter and taken them away but when it turned down in the end like this whole time he's been searching for his wife and daughter but they were dead the whole time and he was the one who killed them oh. and he just forgot it that's also shutter island with oh. leo Di- dicaprio okay like he killed his wife who was pregnant with child and this whole time he was on an island thinking that he was like trying to figure out this murder but he was the murderer the whole time and he was actually an inmate in the prison island, he was not a detective there. I'd been saving. I've not seen it. I was saving Shutter Island for our twentieth wedding anniversary, and I can't stand you. You ruined it, oh, man. <laughs> I can't stand you. You're there heartless. Was, <laughs> I guess we'll go on a cruise or something. <laughs> Maybe you should know your wife better after that. I did. That's why I saved that movie. It seems obscure, but it was the one thing I had oh, to demonstrate it. my love. Okay. All right, we're gonna do one more, but yeah, I'm gonna give you the option. Here's okay. the two options. Title, wife's online chats with man, irk hovering husband, can't keep her trap shut. <laughs> I, I'm interested in the first one, but I definitely want the second one. Yeah, what's the grandma saying? Oh, okay, I agree. I'm a booba. I think that's number two. Okay. Dear life from the path. <laughs> Dear life. I can go either way. <laughs> My mom won't shut up about ladies in her house. We're not even there. <laughs> My son, who is five, has a rare spinal cord injury from birth. Oh. He can crawl, but he does not walk well. 
We have spent many months and a lot of money ensuring he's getting the best physical therapy and medical care possible for his condition. And we adhere closely to the medical advice of these experts. My mama, who lives 2,000 miles away, loves my son and wants to spend time with him. However, whenever we visit, she obsesses over the fact that my son can't walk well. I've reminded her not to fixate on his disability and to just enjoy time with him, which is what my son wants. But during this last visit, she told him, big boys walk, they don't crawl, and try harder to walk. My son has tearfully asked me twice if he can still be a big boy and crawl. He also uses a wheelchair. I'm fed up with my mom and would prefer to keep her away from my son, but I I don't want to create a dramatic familial rift. Any advice? You have explained to your son that some people just don't understand. You know, they just don't understand. Yeah. That's a hard thing to take in as a five-year-old. I really hope at this point you've shot it to your mom straight. Right. I was going to say, like, there's a a pass of, like, well, their generation may have have grown up differently. Like, parents are always weird. They're going to be differently to what you think about your kids. But, like, to an extent, this needs to be a, Ma, I, I appreciate that you think that you're being helpful. And I, whether you think I'm coddling my child or we're not as tough on our kids as you were and, and that's a bad thing or whatever, I understand that you may have good intentions, but you need to shut your mouth because you're hurting my, my kid's feelings. And it's not like a, my kid's being ridiculous and shouldn't have feelings hurt. Right. Can't friggin' walk. And all you do is say that big boys walk. I don't need that, and neither do they. You need to knock it off. I think it's a good teaching moment as well, though, for the child that like that you're gonna your whole yeah. life you're gonna face people who don't get it. Absolutely, there'll be students, there'll be teachers, yep, coworkers. I mean, yeah, yeah, and like, and, yeah, tell and to give up. the kids some tools on how to deal with it. True, yeah. right? Like that's almost funny person I know. Like, they're funny because they had a thing. 100%. And then so, like, they just figured out the best way to do it was make a joke about it or make a joke about something else and whatever. And so, like, before they have to do it out of a pit of despair, you may be like, here, here's a couple options you right. could use. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, make it a, make it fun and make it a joke. and be like, hey, look, it's going to hurt every once in a while because people, that's all they want to talk about. But, like, we got we to gotta let them know that there's more to you than just this. So Absolutely. we're going to pass over it with a comedy. And if they insist, like, it's okay to draw some boundaries and go, well... I'm not making any gains here, so like this relationship, this conversation can come to an end, and no hard feelings. And I think it's part of being real about the situation is like there's there's a difference. There is a difference in you than there are in the kids around yeah, you. Yeah. There's a difference in you and some of your cousins or whatever that that grandma's used to or whatever. And like that can be a power for you. It can absolutely be a thing that can be a blessing to you if if you if you learn to work it right. I've seen some kids that have been through some like horrific situations that are some of the funniest and greatest kids I've ever seen oh, yeah. and have awesome attitudes through some of this stuff and are just like, yeah, this is my reality and I'm going to own it the best that I can and I'm going to run through it. The the world is not their sad very well should and could be it's just flat out a superpower for them and it's yeah. awesome maybe even take take your your child to one of those like veteran uh, wheelchair basketball games or you know say mm-hmm. just show them there are some big boys that yeah. don't, that don't yeah. walk you know yeah and and, and you're going to be all right absolutely you know it, i think if it's just this one thing and you've talked to your mom about it and she's like if she wants to double down and make this the like the flagstaff of her relationship with your son then she's making the choice not to be in relationship with your son. Right. And like, you can say as much, right? You don't have to be a jerk about it, you know, but like you can say as much, say your entire relationship is not going to be focused on my son's inability to walk. And so let me know if you want to continue a relationship where that's not the only thing we're going to focus on. And if like, she makes the choice that like, she thinks you're calling him or whatever, then she made that call. Yep. You know, but overall, I don't know if it's a relationship ender right off the bat. Right? Like, it's a good teaching moment for your son. Right. It's a good way to try to look at people that won't understand. All those things are true and right. Yep. Okay. Uh, ready? Secular says, it is your duty as a mother to protect your son from harm. Tell your, quotes help thing again to shame him. It will be the last time she sees him. The person who creates the familial rift won't be you. It will be your incredibly ignorant and insensitive mother. Eh. I mean, it's, you came out a little strong. Right. Like, you came a little fired oh, up. Oh, about 50% of that. Yeah, 50% of that is probably about yeah. right, right? Like, but give give people choices. Give them the options. Sometimes people just need a revealing and, and see how much damage they're doing. They probably don't know, you know? And so, but if we're wrong and she really is that insensitive and really just wants to be the person that inspires your son to walk, uh, she might have to take a break. That's true. I think uh, sometimes it depends on the person and their personality, but, like, they'll look out and go, oh... My kid, they're, my kids are being a little soft, and they just you know they just need a little extra boost, right. and I'm willing to come in and help. I'm willing to do the hard thing, 
Uh, and really, it's not the hard thing. It's the harsh thing. And they don't know that. So, yeah, I think you got to get them a chance to make a change. But uh, if they persist in it, I think it's okay to give the old guillotine. And uh, to be honest with you, especially, is like depending how long you've been a parent, it's really hard to gauge. Like if you're being overly sensitive to a thing or not. Right. Right. As you get older, it gets a little bit easier to understand. When I was just a brand new, my, my daughter was brand new, six months old, and like she'd be crying and I'd be holding her. And, you know, one grandma would say, he pinched you. Did he pinch you? You know, and I'm like, hey, freaking pincher. Why would you say that? <laughs> like, what a jerk thing to say, acting like I pinched my own kid. Like, I was all fired up about it. You know, and like, she didn't mean anything by it. She's oh, yeah. just a grandma, you know, saying the thing. But like, I was like, any anybody that would try to tell me that I wasn't taking the absolute best care of my kid, like, I was so worried about defending myself that I missed any wisdom or slash comedy I could have taken yeah. out of the situation. Because I was a young parent, and I thought people were looking down on me, and I couldn't take it. I thought they were, you know what I'm saying? And so, like, sometimes moms come off like that, and they don't mean to be, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Sometimes they do, though. So, like, I mean, it's hard to say without being in that situation, but, like, I think you you didn't say anything else about your mom apart from this particular thing. So I think you get to say an honest thing, have out that conversation, and depending on how it bears out, then you can call some balls and strikes after that. Yeah, I think that's right. All right, hey, you've been listening to Live from the Path. Thanks so much for hanging out with us this evening. If you got any feedback for us on the show, you can use the Live from the Path complaint. 7085 call or text the Bob Eisenhower Live from the Path complaint line 515-517-0085. We would love to hear from you and some of the various questions that we had on the show, or you just need to get it off your chest that you think the show is terrible. Mm. Uh, also, it is the season if you're looking for that special gift. For that person in your life who loves Life from the Path, or uh, you know people who hate the show and you just really want to get at them, uh, go ahead and go to LifeFromThePath.org, click the shop button, and uh, you can buy your favorite wares and commodities for this special holiday season. And uh, we'd uh, we'd encourage you to do that. I think we make a good uh, fifteen cents or whatever, regardless of what you buy. So we could awesome. we could use it around here. You've seen the production quality. Yeah. In the meantime, uh, I don't know. We Oh, yeah, next week, I think uh, Micah Smith is going to be in. He's got a new single coming out, and so we'll dig on that. And uh, we're excited to, to talk to him, see what's going on with him, and to uh, see what Jesus is doing in our lives. In the meantime, be faithful in the means. God will handle the ends. You've been listening to Live from the Path. <laughs>